Now these mountains were tremendously high and a lot of times they were not visible, were they? So if a big storm has come up and planes are flying, one of the worst hazards was actually not just the wind dashing them around, but it was actually hitting the mountains, flying right into the mountains. Well, Marilyn, <laughs> the, the way you avoided hitting those mountains or solid clouds was to get up high enough. And for instance, um, we would fly to the Naga Hills and you had to be above 12,000 feet. Well, 12,000 feet is just about the height of timberline. So you don't find trees growing above that altitude. And anybody that tries to live above 12,000 feet uh, almost needs oxygen. And then when we uh, would go past the Naga Hills and uh, the Brahma Putra Valley, then you come to another range of hills and the Irrawaddy, and in that area was where General Stilwell was trying to fight. Then there's another big ridge of hills, and they come from the North and Himalaya Mountains on down, and they gradually decrease because then the um, Mekong and other rivers would flow on down, not just to the uh, Indian Ocean, but on over to to China, and then eventually you get over to the Ganges and, and um, the Yellow River. Now you mentioned uh, needing oxygen. Did not all the planes have oxygen? Well, that was why we loved being in the B-29s, is we were the first ones to be pressurized. So we didn't always need oxygen, but we could blow a blister or have uh, engine trouble, and you didn't have oxygen. Uh, or pressurization had to go on oxygen. And of course, uh, flying the hump, uh, you always tried to be clean shaven because if you had whiskers, then you would lose some of the oxygen. Um, then again, when you're flying in the soup and three fourths of the time, we were flying in, in heavy weather, you couldn't see anything. And then once in a while you'd break out and my golly, you'd look up and hey, there's mountains up ahead because the winds were blowing us sometimes 80 or 100 miles off course. We might be heading this way, but the wind is blowing us up over into, into the mountains. The mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, then if you had to bail out, uh, if you had engine trouble or iced up too much, uh, then, then you really had problems. Did all the planes flying over there have instruments? So oh, yes, could, okay. no, you Every, had to have instruments. Had instruments, and in flying uh, in heavy weather, you, you <laughs> use a needle ball and airspeed, and then there's a little replica of a, of a plane, and you want to try to make sure that the wings are level. But if you've got anoxia, which is lack of oxygen, or uh, you could think you were going, and pretty soon you're leaning more and more and more, and uh, I had a pilot take uh, the plane away from me one time. He said, Harry, you're in vertigo. You're, we're going into a spin. And so he took it away. And sure enough, then pretty soon I uh, came back. Now, <laughs> I had been told that one guy always took a cat and a dog, a, a duck with him. And the reason he figured that if his instruments went out, he could throw and watch the cat because the cat was always going to land on fours and be upright. And gosh, he used the duck because a lot of times he came in to land and the duck could help him land in the water. I mean, on the runway. And One thing that I, I remember hearing too was that um, you, the, their gasoline was so limited, the fuel was so limited that you'd, they'd give you just a minimum amount to fly over and back. So you'd take your, your gasoline cargo over, leave it in China, and barely have enough gasoline to fly back over the hump to your base in <laughs> India and some of the people did actually if they had engine trouble and had to fly on fewer engines that took more gas in it or if they got in a heavy wind so that oftentimes they didn't make it back to the base in India because they ran out of gas. They call it the aluminum trail. <laughs> and it was because there were so many planes lost all the time. Uh, in a, I have been told that there were three lives lost in hauling 10,000 tons over the 
mountains. And for a long while, they couldn't haul 10,000 tons in, in uh, a month. In fact, uh, it was a big event in uh, 1943 uh, when they had finally made 10,000 tons. But you see, General Stilwell had control in India on what was sent over the hump. And if he needed uh, guns or uh, ammunition to fight for his soldiers, he would use that tonnage to, to provide for them. And poor General Chenault over in China, uh, he might have to have his airplanes sit on the ground, especially after he got the newer P-51s and the P-47s because they used more gas. And if there wasn't the gas available, they'd just have to sit. And so. that was awkward.